Hello, welcome back to BAPT 2023 conference. Um, we've got a talk now called Balance and Belonging from Knowing Typological Blockages from Mark Majors. And Dr. Mark Majors it has over three decades as a psychometrician. He works, his works include um, 94 strong MPTI uh, forms M and Q. Um, and Q is a manual author. His own measures are the Majors PTI elements um, the OEM and the Spiritual Gifts Inventory. He's now a pastoral counsellor, author, and husband of Mary in the Ozark Mountains in the US. Um, so welcome, Mark. Um, please take it away. Okay. Well, nice to see you all. Uh, and um, I'm going to begin by just running through. Uh, there was pre-reading if anyone wanted to do it, but I'm just going to run through uh, the very basics of the pre-reading and then get into some actual examples of um, uh, things from my instrument, uh, scores and scales. And uh, we can talk about how that really helps in identifying blockages. I, I really loved uh, ringing, reading uh, Jung's book, um, his 1923 um, type, and um, his discussion of blockages, which is is not given much uh, attention in the psychometric world. People just don't uh, develop anything to deal with blockages. And, and it's so important as a counselor, <clears throat> I find the, the strangest of things that occur. And, um, and there's, you know, it'd be nice to have a heads up. It, it would be nice to take an assessment and give it to them and not only get type and eight process scores, which mine does, but also these, um, Personality formations, I call it, which are just blockages that occur in a person's life. And blockages develop. Uh, they're not type, but they're not innate. Uh, some of them could be uh, biological or, or genetic, but they tend to be formed by experiences in life, either desired experiences or they're formed by uh, aversive experiences, uh, adapting to aversive situations. And so, as I go through them, there's no good and bad. It's just what there is and, and people will adapt. And so I'm gonna go by the bio, there we go. So we're gonna look at tools for examining, examining blockages and barriers. Uh, this comes from the major's element instrument, but the A process scores are also in the PTI, which um, is much shorter. So the two things that we're looking at is personality formations, uh, which are the blockages and the eight process scores, uh, which is um, a take on the uh, eight mental functions. And we'll talk about that. So the first thing I'm gonna run through the personality formation scores. And um, it's a tool for a barrier detective. And, and all of us who do counseling, we wanna know what the barriers are. So we put on our Sherlock Holmes hat and go searching and trying to see what we can find. And so this is just gonna be a quick overview. Uh, personality formation scores provide clients with understanding about ways they respond in situations in life, things that have developed, ways of responding, ways they act with others. And their scores are not scales. And people say, well, mean? You know, um, because these are just statements that are based upon the, the actual intent, they're content valid statements. Uh, if I say I like bird watching and I say I belong to an ornithological or organization, I hope I said that right, then, then you could say, oh, I, I like birds. Uh, that would not be a leap you know, of intellect. And so they're based on that similar type of notion. So there's 42 phrase pairs of statements and develop beliefs and attitude towards various situ situations. Um, develop, therefore, they're changeable. Um, major dimensions are general perseverance style in the face of problems, in the face of pressure, and what kind of emotional style do they have about that? 
and level of adaptation. How do they adapt to people in their environment, uh, communications? How do they treat their own information? Um, are they rigid about things? Uh, and do they believe that their relationships will be okay? Or will they fail? So the metrics very simply are minus 20 to 20 on the two main scales, general perseverance style and level of adaptation. And um, here's just a, a little thing. I, I don't, I'm, even though I, I'm a psychometrician, I'm not big on cookbook type of information. Uh, a lot of people that are familiar with the MMPI, which measures pathology, there's a, there's a lot of textbook that talk about just simple little things that you can look at numbers and make an assumption. Well, I have general rules about things, but there's nothing hard and fast because people are people and they're all variable. So believed ability to succeed is the last major scale and it goes from minus 40 to 40 because it's just summative of the other two, the perseverance and the adaptation. And it's a simple, very powerful scale. And if, if you use it, you, you'll know what I mean tells us the self-efficacy of the person to succeed in what they're trying to do. Typically, an occupational place or, or relationships or something. So, so the subcategories for perseverance are response to pressure. I mentioned that before. Emotional style and orientation toward the problem. Now, like response to pressure, and stop and avoid, drive and thrive. Neither one's bad. People learn to stop and avoid pressure situations because they don't like them. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. that that's perfectly okay. And uh, orientation toward problem, pull back or overcome. Some people don't even see problems. They're just a natural part of the day to day working um, and functioning. Uh, some people, when problems come, they go, no, you know, I don't like this environment. I have too many problems. Uh, the second area we talked about, the large group, is level of adaptation. There's interaction orientation. How do you take care of the information, your feelings that you have with regard to other people? Are you guarding your self-interest? Or are you trusting others? Communication interpretation. When somebody's talking to you, do you interpret their communication with suspicion or do you accept it at face value? Belief orientation is, you know, <clears throat> um, some people, they are so set in their beliefs they will not listen to an opposing viewpoint. And some people are open and they'll listen. That doesn't necessarily mean they change but they're open to what's being said. And relationship interpretation, negative voice, optimistic voice. And negative voice means, I believe that all my relationships end up in the garbage. They don't work out, they, they turn out bad. And optimistic, is, you know, by and large, my relationships are okay. They always uh, come out okay. The metrics of the subscales is pretty simple. Max for all of them is 10 when both sides are together and um, there's no neutral responses that are given at that time. And scores on the left may point to a barrier. Uh, scores on the right may point to a strength. The scores need response style interpretation. They need to be interpreted based on response style. A response set on my instrument, for those of you who have not seen it, is um, I have a neutral in the middle, which is not scored. And unlike other instruments, one of the unique things is it looks like I have a Likert, Likert scale, but it's actually two separate scales. Now, if you respond to an item on the left, somewhat like me would be one, very like me would be two. But in the other direction, if you respond from neutral to somewhat very on the other side, the item is completely omitted. 
it's not there. That keeps you from developing a lot of measurement error. And I found in my research work that uh, a lot of instruments just make hypotheses that they do not test about the other side of the Likert. Um, we'll look a little bit at the report and what things look like. Uh, it's all numeric form, the professional report that comes. There's two reports. There's a, a client report that's, I think, 15 pages. Um, I should know I wrote it, huh? But um, the professional report is just all formation stuff first. You can see here, uh, I'm going to have a problem, I think, because all, can I move my um, images around, Richard? What do you want to do, Mark? Uh, my images are blocking part of my screen. Um, if you will need to get to another window or something, you can press escape, I think, on your keyboard, and then you should be able to access your bar. Does that help? Yeah, it helps some. Let's see what I can do here. That still work for everybody? We can still see your slides. Yeah. Okay. So the first one here is the personality formation. It's the general perseverance. How does this person persevere? Uh, Nancy uh, is a wonderful person. Her perseverance style is 16. And if you remember from the example of the scoring, it goes from plus 20 to minus 20. And so she's unusually high in her ability to persevere. And um, when it comes to response to pressure, uh, she has no stop and avoid. So she's really just drive and thrive. She, uh, she's, she's a bulldozer. I, I hope that term works in, in UK. Um, emotional style, she's very high and adventurous. Um, people will call her bubbly and energetic. And when it comes to problems, she just you know goes right on through. She doesn't even see problems. She's a, um, she does an extremely powerful person, does extremely well. <clears throat> um, the level of education, I uh, hope you guys have the same screen as me, do you? Yeah. We can still see the slides for PowerPoint. Um, if you need to share a different window, you might have to go to a screen share again and then select a different window to share. Screen share? Well, it says I'm still sharing. It's, it's a, you're sharing a particular window, which is the PowerPoint. So we can't see everything on your desktop. You might have to reshare as a different window. If you want, unless you want to show the PowerPoint, we can see the N2 slide at the minute. Uh, okay. Okay. We'll go ahead. Um, her interaction orientation, um, well, her level of adaptation is high. Oh, 10, 10 is a nice high score. Um, her, her interaction orientation, she, she's guarding a little bit of self-interest, but she tends to trust others. She's not suspicious of motives when it comes to communication and interpretation, and she pretty much accepts people at face value. And she's not real rigid. She's actually pretty flexible and willing to listen to different ideas. And she has pretty much an optimistic view of her relationship with people. Um, so her believed ability to succeed, that self-efficacy of success is incredibly high. That 26 is very high. And, and talking with Nancy, she's just able to make anything happen. She doesn't see problems. Um, she just goes straight forward and bypasses everything. And uh, um, just a wonderful individual. 
<clears throat> Cindy, on the other hand, her general perseverance style is minus six. Uh, Cindy does not like to persevere. She does. She's equal up and avoid and drive and thrive. And she's very low and cautious with emotional style. And she pulls back more than she will overcome. She's an administrative assistant in an office complex. And sort of sometimes she has to sit out. Um, big difference between her and right? Nancy's score was what, uh, 16? This is minus six. Um, COVID lockdown. Cindy, wearing her masks, would have to deal with problems as people came in the door. And being a very relational person, it was so difficult with the mask to begin with. And then uh, facing nothing but problems and the pressure of solving those problems. Cindy didn't say anything. Her emotional style is low, cautious. So she didn't say much. And she actually kind of burned out and had to take some time off because it was just too much for her. Um, she didn't speak up. We'll come back to this. Her level of adaptation is a little better and she's has a good guarding self-interest, uh, balance with trusting others. She's totally suspicious of the motives of other people. Totally suspicious. And um, she was burned by people at work and people who came in the door so many times over the years that she, on face value, she trusts nobody. Uh, so you have to prove yourself to her. And it causes her problems. Uh, because it makes slow to make relationships and makes it difficult. Um, she is pretty much open to change and her person and she does not think that any of the relationships turn out lou lousy. Um, they're all good. But her believability to succeed, I think where Nancy's was maybe 25, something like that, 26. Is two almost. And so I asked her, said, would you ever consider going into business for yourself or being entrepreneurial? And she says, absolutely not. Absolutely not. She likes knowing what to do, being told what her responsibilities are. She doesn't like to get out on a limb. She doesn't like to, you know, uh, risk None of those things are part of her whatsoever. Now, briefly, I'm, I'm going to jump into the other set of uh, assessment, the uh, Majors A process scores. It's a measurement and use of the use and access of young and mental function. So we all know everybody in this group probably very familiar with young and eight mental processes. There are two functions that come in two forms, perception and judgment. Uh, perception has two forms, sensing, intuition, judgment, thinking, and feeling. Uh, the function operates in attitude, and that's how we get the eight. Uh, everybody um, understands the nomenclature you know, that we use for extroverted functions and introverted functions. Uh, these eight mental functions, um, the expression of which I refer to as eight process scores. And these are not the functions. This is not um, the static model of mental functions that one drives from um, the four letter code. This is what does have the person have access and use to, uh, the ability to use it, how do they express it? And there are learned things that are in here. It does not change the genetic process. But as, as Jung says, you know, it's the functions on life. And I really like that. It's uh, life just enhances and makes more difficult some of the functions. So, so the metrics in this, uh, it is a standard with a mean of 50, standard deviation of 10. 
and I use the normative sample and balance by type of gender. And this kind, this is important because I randomly extracted equal number of men across all 16 types and randomly extracted an equal number of women across all types in order to develop the normative score. So it does an excellent job. <clears throat> so it is back to Nancy. This is Nancy's eight process scores. And we see that extroverted feeling, you know, is probably the thing she has most access to use. She's known as a, just this warm, fuzzy person. And just everybody likes her. She, she serves people. She just does great work. Uh, a lot of extroverted sensing, you know, at the top because she really does pay attention to outside things when she's serving for it. But also, the location that's more than one step below the main and um, extroverted feeling and extroverted thinking. The surprise is kind of like the extroverted thinking is so high. But I should have put up her husband's because uh, his extroverted thinking was like 70 something. So she's been living with this guy for 20 some odd years. And, and so I think she's kind of adapted to a little bit of that and develop some of uh, function a little bit more than would normally have been done. Um, this is Cindy again. Um, we see that her extroverted feeling is 64.85, um, 65. And I'll be showing her husband here in a little bit. Um, Dan, amazing. Amazing. Um, her um, primary or dominant function, introverted sensing, 68. It's almost two standard deviations above, above the mean. That's she's mentally operating all the time with all the things from the past, all the things that she's been done, all the emotional things she's experienced, and she really has that that entire repertoire ready right in her mind. Um, Her, her extroverted thinking is, is quite high too because her husband and her boss are, are both IST. And, and um, so she's constantly involved with men who are, operate completely in this extroverted thinking realm. Some comparisons. And then we start talking about how we use these boundaries. Uh, balance and belonging, um, being a part of things. We, we all know that uh, our typological status needs to be balanced. So we don't want to get in the grip. And there needs to be some kind of balance um, between introversion, extroversion, and the functions, sensing and intuition. Everything is sort of on this pivot point. And sometimes, and, and I'm going to show you a, a couple of slides where people were just so inundated during the lockdown that, that things didn't work out well. And so when I worked with them, uh, they actually went back to uh, doing what was more natural and became much more comfortable. A couple of them were depressed and uh, were on medication, and they got off the medication and began to uh, function the old way. Um, I talked to a lot of during lockdown uh, here in this part of the country. Um, this part of the country is a lockdown. Um, there are um, 14,000 people in the county that I live in. It's a huge county, and there's only one town in the whole county. And so um, if you're an introvert, you love this county. <laughs> if you're an extrovert, you have to go someplace for some kind of a social, experiential um, involvement. <clears throat> Holly um, is a fascinating person. Looking at her personality formations, she um, her general perseverance style is kind of low. Um, she in the stop and avoid. She doesn't care much for pressure, and she really doesn't care a lot for problems either. 
but her emotional style is high and adventurous. She's an introvert. She's an introvert feeling type. So what do you think might happen when there's pressure and problems applied to Holly? Well, the answer is with this emotional style of five, she goes off. <laughs> uh, everybody in the workplace knows that Holly is unhappy. And I tell you what works, then everybody like greasing the squeaky wheel comes to Holly's aid to help. And so <laughs> this is a very functional pattern that, that works real well for her. So the pressure where she was working, serving people at lockdown really would get to her and she'd yell and that people would just come over and help her out. And, and you know, and um, she would say, she told me that she'd have a blow up a couple of times a week when it got too much. Um, not on purpose, it's just what happened with the stress. Back to Cindy, Cindy, you see, I put her back up because she's an introvert also, a feeling type introvert. And she was low and cautious, so she didn't say anything. And as I said, that got her because she didn't speak up. She didn't cry help. She didn't say anything, and it really got to her. And she succumbed to the pressure and had to take a little time off. Uh, second part of Holly's, her level of adaptation was actually pretty good. Um, she trusts everybody. She says, and it's come back to bite her because she's now a little suspicious of their motives. She still says that she gives her information to people uh, almost without stopping and thinking about it. Um, but sometimes that doesn't work because people take the information she gives and they have motives and it's caused her problems. So she's becoming somewhat suspicious. She's open to change. I don't see too many people that have all open to change and zero rigid because uh, a way of interpreting that maybe, and you have to check this out with your client, um, that they have no personal barriers. There's nothing in their life that they hold dear, uh, like there are certain things that I won't be flexible on. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, um, I'll listen, but I certainly won't be flexible. Um, and a story about the power of that. I was giving assessment to a high school senior who she wanted to learn about a personality before she went to college. And she was rigid 10 and open to change zero. And I thought, wow, man, that means she won't listen to you at all. If you have an opposing viewpoint, she won't listen. And I asked her, I said, hey, when your girlfriends come up and they say something that uh, you're opposed to, do you cover your ears and walk away and say, I'm not listening and just cover your ears? She said, how did you know that? You know, did somebody tell you? I mean, so it's just, if you get a rigid 10, this person, will not entertain an opposing viewpoint. Um, and Holly says some of her family stuff uh, is negative, turns out bad, but typically most of her personal relationships with people comes out pretty good. And so her ability to see it is not too bad, uh, not real high. She prefers to be told what to do, but she likes the flexibility. Um, she is uh, intuitive. <clears throat> And Cindy, on the same, showing hers again, um, her believed ability to succeed was in the negative. Her level of adaptation was okay, but it really shows up with this suspicious emotive thing. That was really what was causing her problem. And um, up with Holly, the motives. So she was really trusted and she was, you know, really able to make a noise when there was a problem. Cindy was not able to make a noise and she did a lot of grin and bear it stuff. Uh, here's Holly's eight process scores. Um, <clears throat> introverted intuitive, nice and high. 
the interesting thing I want you to notice extrovert sense for inferior. She has virtually no access to paying attention to outside details. We, we talk about that. She gets in trouble all the time with her husband who has a really high extroverted sensing ability. And so they see, both see the same thing and she's not paying attention to any details, just sort of the big ambiance, a picture of it. And he's just focusing on every little detail and got it all. And he asked her a question and she can't answer. And so he will immediately wonder, why can't you answer me? What's wrong? And so intervention on that scale worked pretty good because they know that it's typological innate and it's not something that the person is deliberately trying to do to aggravate the other. And so increase their sense together, belonging together, uh, being united, it really worked very well. She's balanced in a lot of areas, um, extroverted thinking. And what I thought was kind of interesting was um, your eyes adjusted, extroverted thinking was really low and her husband's is really high. So they talk in different languages and they've had to learn to deal with that. So it really helps to balance the relationship by knowing that it's not natural uh, to think logically and come up with things. She just doesn't do that. And, and so his expectations of her to be able to do what he does just really stopped when he understood that. And she, you know, this extroverted feeling just so high and this intuition stuff so high. Um, they kind of got along on the introverted or the, the intuition thing because they're both intuitive, but how they talk about it, one in logic and one in relation was totally different. And it seemed like they were not even on the same plane at all, but they are now. Um, this is Dan. Dan is um, Cindy's husband. And this is something very interesting with lockdown. It, 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 it's about balance and belonging totally. Uh, Dan, there's the scores at the top, the preference type you get on the professional page. So introversion high, sensing high. Uh, thinking high and and perception high. Uh, he learned a lot of judging because he he had to. You know, he said that he really had to learn how to do things. Um, you're going to find his occupation interesting and his story through the lockdown. His general perseverance style is um, kind of low, not real high, but it's not terrible. It's he <clears throat> up and avoid is. Expression is high in inventors. He's an ISTP, so um, high in adventure, you would wonder about that. And his dealing with problems, some pull back, but he tends to overcome. Now, uh, here's Dan's um, level of adaptation is negative. Um, he guards his self interest some, he trusts others sometimes. He's very suspicious of motives. Um, he he changed a little bit, but he pretty set in his ways and his thinking. And most of his relationships turn out kind of bad. And so um, talking about that is it, it was really sad that he had that experience. His believed ability to succeed is just about zero. Um, his eight process scores. You see, uh, introverted sensing, extroverted sensing. Uh, so his attention to detail internally of the past and all that stuff, all experiential. And the outside world is, is really, really very nice. Uh, introverted thinking and is extroverted thinking. <clears throat> now, I would tell the story and go back and some of this starts to make sense. Um, Dan got out of college and he was taking criminal justice because he wanted to be in law enforcement. Now, th this guy's about 
six three, uh, two two twenty, about a hundred kilos. <laughs> so, you know, he's a big guy. And he couldn't get a job because it's lockdown, it's COVID. And so, he ended up taking a position in a maximum security prison. And so. Maximum security prison. And so he keeps to himself. Remember, it's, it's just, just below 50 on extroverted thinking. So he doesn't talk. He keeps his mouth shut. And he suspicious of the motives. All he was dealing with was convicts that were in maximum security. It means they probably killed somebody, raped a bunch of people, did, did violent things to people. And so he developed this mindset to just be totally careful. Um, working in that environment was not for him, not for his personality, not for his personality type. It really kind of wounded him the few years that he was there. He really burned out on it. He, he just was crying out to get out of there. And um, see, he, he tend, <laughs> here's the fat thing, his extroverted feeling way down there, but his wife, remember, hers was way up there. And so there's this mismatch. He comes home, he's fried, he can't talk, he doesn't talk. Um, it's really problematic. And as we were working together, he got accepted in a sheriff's office in a neighboring town that's a wonderfully peaceful community um, filled with lots of opportunities for law enforcement to help and serve and work with children and, and adults and stuff. And it's a totally different environment. So we talked about his sense of paranoia and his fear of talking and dealing with people and how that needed to change. And I haven't given him a, a post assessment yet. But I know in talking with them, it's probably going to definitely come out different. Um, <clears throat> this is um, Cindy, his wife, extroverted feeling, 64. His extroverted feeling, 37. And so, you know, communication is not real crisp. Um, so I, I taught him a style how to communicate and discuss things that was uh, neutral. Um, that work for both extroversion, introversion, or excuse me, uh, thinking and feeling. And things went real well with the marriage. But <clears throat> this difference that you see, you see here, you don't see this in um, 16 types. But you can go back and forth and look at the things. Um, both have a heightened extroverted sensing because that's what they do in their jobs. That's what they've been trained to. Um, she has no extroverted intuition. Whoops. He has virtually none. So what do you think they thought about the future? It's bleak, it's dark. When they got burned out and in the grip, you know, um, no hope for us. And so we worked on that. They don't have a lot of ability to understand that, but coaching with them, encouraging them, they, they really found out, um, yes, there is hope, there is a future. And a lot of what they're dealing with as a couple was personality typology differences. And once they understood that, things began to be different because they were both thinking, well, why, why do you do this to me, um, which is, you know, kind of typical for couples. Uh, I think one hit them. Checking my time, good. It's coming out about right. Uh, this is the last comparison one. This is this is the PTI that did not take elements. So I have eight process scores, and this is their preference score as it comes out on on the PTI and the professional page. Um, hers, you see, they're both extrovert. Uh, they're both sensing. She's feeling type. He's thinking type. But he has a lot 
of responses to the feeling questions. And they're both typically judging. Yeah. And so this is right at the end of the lockdown. Now here's the A process course. You see that both of them do some extroverted sensing. He is really high in that. He's really paying attention. His extroverted thinking is 75. And hers is 47. This is the fascinating thing right here. Look at this. Their extroverted feeling is the same. How can that be? Well, it's occupational. So naturally, he said, he never liked to do that. He never was that warm and fuzzy kind of guy. He never was expressive like that. He's a realtor. And, and he's in a the highest price market in the United States. Let's say that. It's known to be the number one real, real estate market. So he learned that if he paid attention to the other person, just like a counselor, and was paying attention to them emotionally and talking and interacting, that his sales doubled, you know, basically, because they felt like this guy cared. And it also worked tremendously for his wife, who was a pharmacist. And she was stuck counting pills. And she would get really stressed. And the fact that he was starting to be able to really communicate good with her on a level that she emotionally would connect with uh, made the marriage really do very, very well. Um, I wanted to make sure I left time for questions and thoughts. <clears throat> this, my publisher does. He does my slides for me. <laughs> uh, publish, publisher has got to get paid. I've held out. They, they really think that's important. Um, so um, I think I can unmute you. Any, any questions, any thoughts? Thank you, Mark. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll stop the recording now and then we'll open up Q&A, all right? One sec.